stupid. I'm lying. Um, but we are seeing his Lucina. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, in general, Peach always kind of struggles against sword characters. She's so good at micro spacing, but like, how good is micro spacing against a giant dumb sword? Okay, hold on a second. There was no micro spacing involved there. That was just oh. <laughs> Just an absolute brutalization. 90% out of the gate. That's the first hit we've seen. Oh, and really, that's just insult to injury. Um, what are you gonna do with this? It's. <laughs> oh! Yo, wait. Uh, what does he even do here? Falling up air? Some nasty shenanigans with falling up air? Okay. Damage. <laughs> Honestly. That is actually very funny, though, that he got hit by the. Oh, he was looking for that down smash, but instead still manages to have an up B. Now, this is an interesting position because Dijon Mark, despite taking about 100% in the first five seconds, he's managed to stay alive, and that means he has a hefty amount of rage actually taking the first stock right there. Blank, it felt like he was in nothing but control and managing to respond very quickly, but still, that massive lead he had accrued is just, it is a thing of the past now. All right, clean slate, both of them at... 0% on two stocks here, and okay. Yeah, this is good spacing for Blank, actually. It's a really nice adaptation. Earlier on, we saw Dijon Mark get those, uh... <laughs> Sorry, after what happened in that first stock, I need to pause every single time Blank gets a combo going. Otherwise, I might miss 90% being dealt. Um, but regardless, yeah, no, so he was getting a lot of those up B out of shields. Oh, ah, he did not want that second jab. That could have been a forward smash or something. All right, and there's that up. He had a shield again. I just I was trying to get back to talking about it. Uh, it's a fantastic option, of course, super duper fast. But Peach, it seems like Blank has the ability to just barely outspace it. I mean, as I mentioned at the start, Peach's micro spacing is really what makes her neutral what it is. All right, and now it's actually Dijon Mark with this big lead and not able to actually seal the stock. That's interesting because I'd say that it's typical that Peach can sometimes struggle to find kills, but Lucina, that's normally not the weakness of this character. She has so many strong hitboxes, things like back air, neutral air, and she doesn't have to worry about spacing like Marth, so... Yeah, but it's the stage positioning isn't there. Dijon is never getting one of those big hits when Blank is closer to the blast zone. Yeah, not even going to go for up throw. That's not even going to kill. And what does he need to do to find it? Eventually, it's going to be the F tilt on the side of the stage. Yeah, when you think about that, it was that grab that led into that. And that it's a very interesting dynamic there where if you were against a Lucina at higher percents, you can probably feel comfortable shielding. Because, all right, there's this dead. Oh, not dead. Wow. Good job holding on to your jump. Dead anyway. Uh, he threw the dot eyes away. But anyway, uh, that's the thing about fighting a character like Lucina. Holding shield seems like a good option at those kill percents because she can't kill you unless you break your shield. Uh, but the thing is, you can get a grab, and then that grab can turn into stage positioning, and that's exactly where uh, those kills really, that's where they happen. Anyway, we are now on the last stock here for both of these players. We've kind of had a very back and forth, but uh, yeah, I believe Don Juan, J Dijon Mark has always just been a little bit ahead. They've both been at kill percent, but he's the one who's finding that last hit first. Okay, and this is an interesting stage to be at, and oh, 108% trapped in the corner. Oh, that could have possibly been death for Dijon Mark, and he's looking for the finisher. You saw that forward smash, hoping that a roll on stage would come his way, but no, Blank very intelligently doesn't give it to him. And now he's the one with stage positioning. What can he do with it? Oh, that shield is so tiny, but it's just big enough to block the side B. Blank once more put in the corner. This is where f tilt becomes really scary. He's looking for it. Oh, but the dash attack just catching that shield breaker, knowing that he wanted to pop it. He was... There first, though. That's an F-Tilt, but from center stage, that's... Why? Cool. I'm, uh... I'm not gonna pretend like I wasn't just blue-balled there. <laughs> Considering the fact that that game was so close, so neck-and-neck neck throughout the entirety of it, the fact that it's going to end with a, um... A whimper like that is not what you want to see. But, uh, 
Dijon Mark, you know, he's been around the block. He's one of those players that over the last few years has really come into his own. So he doesn't have a mentality that can easily be shaken. And considering how, even though he lost that game, considering how well he was doing and how well the Lucina was working out, we're not going to be seeing a counter character counter pick. But we do see a stage counter pick. Instead, opting for small battlefields. I like this because if you notice, one of the issues he was having when it came to killing was putting Blank at the ledge. He would hit him with something, but he wasn't quite close enough to the blast zone. On these, uh, the fact that the stage itself is just a little bit smaller, that means that a singular hit will trap Blank in the corner quicker. Uh, but you know, oh my God! Okay, you're doing you're doing fine, buddy. <laughs> I don't know I don't know why I was worried. Okay. Oh, just, yeah, he's gone. He's done. Hit 45 too. I don't even know. Would fully charged F Smash have killed? It probably would have. But uh, there's no more guaranteed death than just the slow tumble of a shield break animation. Yeesh. And now 43% already dished out. And the back throw's not going to be killing at this percent. Whoa, well, maybe if you DI like that, it might. What was he DI for? Like. Oh. Maybe he was just really scared. I have no idea. But anyway, with that, Blank does even up the count, uh, the stock count very quickly. Oh, this could possibly be a big punish, especially at these lower percents. That's where Peach gets her meat and potatoes in. Oh, that is a meaty 67% right there. And uh, that's exactly what I was talking about in the game one. He's actually outspacing the up at his shields, and I didn't even know Peach could outspace using that. That was some crazy instant float cancel to just barely be pixels away from it. The adaptation to those defensive options is coming in clutch. And now Blank, despite dying at, oh my god. I was about to say despite the fact he died at 45 last stock. He's doing all right, but then he dies at 70, this one. Oh man, these stocks are disappearing low for him. Considering that, oh, there's a stitch. Okay, just throws it away. Um, Considering the fact that last game both of these guys were consistently living to 130, 140, the fact that Blank is just like dying, uh, kind of at random right now, does not bode well for him, at least in this game too. Looking very similar to the start of this game, Blank down by one stock, about 50% dealt onto him. Back then he was able to find the kill, but with a with a really good edge guard, but. Will he be able to replicate that? It seems that Dijon Mark is playing a lot more patient and defensive. Throwing off these hitboxes, and what a parry! Oh, he was looking for a roll or something. But Blank did not give him exactly what he wanted. Gets away with it, but 106%. Yeah, that side B at the ledge, that will absolutely finish it. <clears throat> we now have a 1-1 game count for this set. We're going to a game three again. <laughs> Stay hydrated, kiddos. <clears throat> ah. <clears throat> All right. Moving in to game three. Ah, uh, game one was so back and forth. Game two was a little bit more of a blowout, but it was a blowout because of those early stocks that were popped, sometimes literally, out from blank this time around. We've seen that at these lower percents. Stock one, blank always consistently out of the gate, lands 70, 80% with these low percent combos. Let's see if he can replicate that for this game three. Oh my god, it's a bomb! Ugh. I, I feel like he should have held it just a little bit. Just put the fear of God in him a little, you know? I mean, <laughs> then again, there are other ways Peach can inspire fear. Ah, oh, but John Mark actually got to be fearless right now and paying for it. An overextension puts him out there, and I don't think he's going to make it back. He does the magnet hands, bring him back to stage, but 134%, 150 now. He still could die to so much, especially because he's there at the ledge find his way out of it. He does with a little bit of center stage. Let's see what he can do. A quick neutral there from Blank, putting him at the ledge once more, though. All right, solid damage from the side B. Let's see what else he could do. Not going to be killing, but it will get that ever just all-important stage positioning. And there it is, catching that roll. The back air sealing the deal. Blank with a real solid lead for the first time this entire set. And once more punishing the yuppies at his shield. Man, I feel like Peach, she's just so tricky to actually 
figure out when that up B can reliably punish. For a lot of characters, it's pretty straightforward because, I mean, up B out of shield is uh, one of uh, the better out of shield options in this game. And, oh my, my. Why does Peach sound like a, a Pikmin when she down smashes? Sorry, that's Daisy. Why does Daisy sound like a Pikmin when she down smashes? All right. Blank looking really good right here. Has lapped in percent already. And we're seeing the desperation from G. John Mark. Ooh, desperation paying off a little bit there, though, with that extension off stage leading to the kill. We now have even stock count, but Blank taking that stock lead once more. And this is a clean two stock to one. How will John Mark respond? This is going to be <laughs> really tricky for him. I like that jump out of the corner. But it's something that Peach can catch, but not necessarily that drastically. I mean, she might be able to go up there and read it with a jump flop forward air. Maybe a falling up air into something like that. But considering the threat of being on the ground trying to get away in the corner against Peach, I definitely think it's a perfectly all right option. And that is like the fifth up the out of shield that he's just whiffed and is being punished by blind. Love the adaptation in this game. The, ooh, that, ooh, some questionable DI there, but just enough gas in the tank, but he dies nonetheless. 98% on Dijon Mark, but he is alive and kicking right now. Can he finally get a bit of an advantage? Even if it's just momentum, momentum can matter a whole lot, especially when you are a Lucina with rage. Oh, I'm loving the dashing, avoiding these hitboxes that Blank is throwing out, but yet to really get a meaningful conversion, and I like that. Recognizing that he cannot just up be out of shield for free anymore. And ah, I think he wanted the parry, but just a little bit off, no jump off stage. Gets back though in the end. Oh wow, the ledge attack actually getting him back to in control, but there it is, the forward air at 171, that will absolutely do it. You saw that there was definitely fight in Dijon Mark, even at the very end there. But regardless, Blank holding it down, it takes the set two to one.